Hello, Vanakkam and welcome to yet another episode on Little Sla YouTube channel. In our last video, we saw about the if controller. And I hope it would have been very useful to you. And today we are going to see about another controller that is the loop controller. So let us see how we can effectively use the loop controller. And we will use this loop controller with two different logic. And also we will see what is the difference between the loop count and the loop controller. And finally, we will see how to use a value from the parameter and run the loop controller. So before we start the video, I once again welcome you all to Little Sla YouTube channel. If you have not subscribed yet, please do subscribe to get our latest videos. Like, comment your feedback and your questions and share it with your friends if you really like the video. Before we move on to the logic on how to use the loop controller, let us see how to add a loop controller. So to add a loop controller, we'll have to right click on any of the HTTP requests that we have recorded. And this is the same script that we have used for the if controller where we log in to a page and we open the fish page. So let me just give a demo. So let me just give a demo on what we have did in the action. So we have opened the fish page. We have chosen a fish. We have added to cart and we have proceeded to check out and we continued and we made the payment. And then all the payments were displayed in this particular My Orders page. So now we will use the loop controller and we will change the logic and we will see how effectively we can use it. And even you can use this in your functional performance or automation testing and make your scripts more value added and more fun to test. So let me tell you how to add the loop controller. So right click on any of the HTTP request or the transaction controller, right click on it, click add and select the logic controller. And under the logic controller, you can select the loop controller. And if you drag it over any of any of the items so it will come up and if you want to move any of the other items you can select it and if you drag it into the loop controller automatically it will move as their child controller and if you want to move it back just drag it down and automatically it will come out so here we can see the loop count in the loop controller we can choose any number of loop counts and under thread group again we have the loop count so what is the difference between the loop count in the thread group and what is the difference between the loop count in the loop controller? So there is a major difference that is this loop count under the thread group will iterate the number of times that we choose. Say for example, if we choose 10 as the loop count in the thread group, the complete script whatever we have under the thread group will iterate that many number of times. But when it comes to the loop controller, this will execute only the transactions that are under its scope. So whatever that are inside the loop controller, that transactions will iterate that many number of times inside the loop controller. So that's the difference. So the thread group is what you have the whole script and then your loop controller say for example so you might have a question what if if i have a two iteration under my loop controller and what if i have two con two iterations under my thread group so how many number of iterations will it happen for this 
script or this transaction which are under my loop controller so in that case the thread group will iterate two times and under each iteration your loop controller will iterate two times so which means if a thread group in the thread group if we have two iterations and under the loop controller if we have two iterations so totally we will have four iterations under the transactions which are in the loop controller but if we have only one iteration in the thread group and two iterations in the loop controller will have two iterations in the loop controller so that's the difference and whatever that comes inside their scope will be iterated any number of times that are given in the loop count so that's the difference and to be precise whatever that that are inside their scope will iterate that many number of times let's now move on to the logic now so here we have the transactions where we land into the application, we log in, we open the fish page, we choose the fish and we add it to cart and we proceed to checkout. We continue, we confirm and sign out. So now let's make the loop controller useful by using it in the logic. So the first logic that I'm going to try is I want to make two separate iterations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the transactions bit from five to nine and I'm taking it inside the loop controller. So what this transaction does is I'm going to choose the fish, adding it to cart, proceed it to checkout and I'm going to continue and confirm. So I'm going to make two payments. So let's see how it works. So I'm going to make two iterations and in the thread group we have one iteration and here in the application so far we have triple one seven so that's the last order that we have made so let us see how many iterations or how many transactions that we are going to make so let me run two iterations and let's see how well does it work so i've started the iterations and let's go to the view results tree and see how many times these transactions are working out. So here we can see two iterations for each of these transactions. So let's now see here. So we have till 1117. And let me just refresh it. And here we can see two iterations lead to two different transactions. So you might ask a question that what if I want to add two items or two fish and make it as a single payment so can I make it yeah there is possibility to do that so in that case what we are going to do is like we are going to add the fish twice and add it to the cart and then the proceed to checkout and the payment will happen only once so let's move this out of the loop controller so now you can see we are adding the item twice and the payment is going to be one time activity. So that is the difference. So initially we made, we choose the, we chose the item, we made the payment and then we again went back to the loop controller and then again we chose the item, we added to the cart, we made the payment. So that was two iterations. So this time in the logic number two that we are going to try, we are choosing the same item twice and we are going to payment we are going to pay it for a single time so let us see how does it work I'm just clearing out all our previous executions and now i'm running so before i'm running let's just check out so we have 1119 and that was the last two orders that we have made let me just refresh and confirm it so 1119 is the last payment so let's now execute with two iterations so just confirm so it's two iterations and let's run it and in the results tree we can see that there are two iterations that were executed so we are choosing the fish twice and adding it two iterations we can see it clearly and we are adding it to cart twice let's now go back to the application and check it once so here we can see the two fish were added 
in the same cart and they were paid. So this is how we can use the loop controller with different logic by changing the transactions or by choosing and making the transactions to execute. So with that, we have seen the logic. So let us now see how to use the value from the parameter and let's see how to execute it. So to do that, we'll have to select the CSV file or the parameterization file. So to do that, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm selecting the config element, the CSV dataset config. And let's now create a file, a notepad where we want to create. So let me add a three as the value that we want to iterate. I'm saving it now. under our folder. So I have already created a folder for this loop controller. And let me name it as iteration.csv. And this is going to be our CSV file. Let me just choose it out from this CSV. And the variable name is going to be iteration. And I'm not making any other changes. So now we have iterations as our as the value. So let me just choose it to copy it. We just click copy and under the loop controller, I'm selecting, I'm giving this value that we have created for the parameter. So now I have given three as the number of iterations. So let's now check it. How does it work? running the iterations again and let's see whether it has been executed so it's showing some issues here let's validate it before that let's we just confirm so it shows that the CSV file inside the loop controller, but actually it has to be outside the loop controller. So I'm now moving it outside the loop controller and I'm running the test. So before that, let's just reproduce the error that we have created already. So what I did is I have kept the CSV file inside the loop controller and I have executed the iteration. So let's now check it once again and see what has happened. So since the iteration did not happen, so that automatically the transaction has failed. So let's now what we are going to do is we are, we will move it outside the loop controller and we will try running the script again. So now we are going to iterate it for three times and let's once again check out. So we have 1121 was the last transaction. Let's now execute the iteration now. And we have completed the execution and there are no errors we have observed. And let's now refresh and see. And yes, we have made three items in the cart. So with that, we have seen of how to use the parameter value into the loop controller. So we just replaced the number with the iteration. So this will help you to create any dynamic script during execution, during any of our testing. So a quick recap. So we have seen what is the difference between the loop count and the loop controller. And then we have seen about the, how to add the loop controller and to use it with various uh, two different logics. And finally, we have seen how to use the parameter value in the loop controller and to iterate it that many number of times. So with that, we come to an end in this video. We will see in another interesting video in our next episode. Till then, it's bye-bye from Vasant Shanmugam and Little's Law.